Johnny O'Neill with Kristoff Tilly up front. Michael Irving, Matt Potter, Randy Richardson are our officials. And as the Broncos are out in their white uniforms with Bronco red numbers, and the Gales come out in their red uniforms with blue trim. Henry, this should be really good. Yeah, really looking forward to this one and really two different styles. St. Mary's wants to control the tempo. Dictate the pace. Santa Clara wants to get on tradition tr in transition. We have a fun one here. Well, these two teams started playing against each other back in 1910. This is the 235th meeting between these two schools. And St. Mary's winning the tip, looking to get off early here on the road as Jefferson's right-handed push shot has St. Mary's on the board. The sophomore from Las Vegas has his team up two to nothing. Justin Jefferson, he's really stepped up in place of Kai Bowman, really having a nice sophomore year. Tilly going against Saxon, backing down, trying to get to the basket, forcing it up with the right hand. And Christoph Tilly, the starting center, in what should be a good matchup down low with Saxon coming up short. Mahaney burst on the scene last year for the Gales. First team all-conference as a freshman and was a big reason that the Gales ended up sweeping the Broncos last year. They won the last three meetings in this head-to-head. -head. There's Mahaney, misses off the iron. Dukas, offensive rebound. That'll be another key statistic we'll keep an eye on as the Broncos did so well against the Bulldogs of Gonzaga on Thursday on the glass, out-rebounding GU by 13, but it's Jefferson with the first three of the game, and the Gales are up 5-0. And typical St. Mary's get the offensive rebound, execute a possession, and knock it down. Johnny O'Neill turning it over. That has been a problem for Santa Clara as Carlos Marshall Jr. will come out. And Tyree Bryan, the 6'5 junior from Orlando, who played the last year at Charleston Southern, comes in averaging nine points and three and a half rebounds. But 25 minutes a game for Herb Sendick and the Broncos. And though he's not a starter... In the starting lineup, starting five, he plays starters minutes, and he's in there at the end of the game when things are in their crunch time. And he was really good Thursday night, making some clutch plays down the stretch for the Broncos. Saxon leaning in, laying it in. A dream start right here for St. Mary's, executing on the offensive end, and Mitchell Saxon averaging close to a double-double, really do playing well this year. This is Adama Alpha Ball, Broncos' leading scorer in conference games. He's up over 20 points of contest. Brent Knapper driving to the basket, loses the handle on it, and here come the Gales. Broncos recover. Saxon up underneath, an easy lay-in. And as you might expect, Herb Sendick getting a timeout as the Gales are out to a 9-0 start. And Henry... This is a 30-second timeout called by Rand. They have played a tougher schedule than the Broncos, although this is Santa Clara's toughest schedule in years. We'll talk about that a little bit more later as a handoff is kicked into the backcourt and run down by Adama Alpha Ball. Randy Bennett thought it is an over and back, but he's told otherwise. His Adama Alpha Ball has it stripped, and the Broncos turn it over. Broncos right now just not in rhythm, and... Credit to St. Mary's defense. Well, the thing about St. Mary's is the style of basketball they play, which can get very kind of uh, sucked the life out of you as an opponent. When they're up by nine, it's really like they're up by 15. Mahaney. Jake Ensminger has checked in for Santa Clara, the redshirt freshman from Germany. This is Brenton Knapper, who started the last eight games and fires the triple. BK for three. And I don't know if there's a hotter player in the West Coast Conference than Brenton Knapper right now. He started 2024 with a bang. And the three conference games for Brenton Knapper, starting at the point guard, he's averaging 11 points and a team high seven rebounds. There's the jumper by Mahaney, missed Tyree Bryan the rebound. Napper to Brian, fumbles it, regains. Francisco Caffaro, the transfer from Virginia, is in. And Tyree Bryan leaning in, and he has it blocked by Saxon. And it goes out of bounds off of Santa Clara. And so far, St. Mary's has done a good job of staying vertical on Adama Alpha Ball. 
Coming off that game winner, we saw it earlier in the broadcast. But when he's able to get downhill, so many good things happen. And credit Mitchell Saxon right there. Good defense. And you see some additional pressure here from the Broncos in the backcourt. Jalen Benjamin, who wears the number 15 in white. A transfer from Mount St. Mary's into the lineup for Herb Sendick. Jefferson open from the wing. Caffaro the rebound. These are, it's quite the study in contrast with Carlos Marshall Jr. back in the game for Santa Clara. As Herb Sendick will use a lot of different players. Randy Bennett likes to stick with those starting five for as long as he can keep them out there. Jalen Benjamin driving baseline. Kicks to the corner, Ensminger. Pumps, leans, has his shot blocked, tipped all the way out. Grabbed by Carlos Marshall Jr. Three on the timer, leaning in, and he forces it up off the glass. No, rebounded by Caffaro. Corner three is blocked, and it's Dukas on the baseline for St. Mary's. And that's what, there's a reason why St. Mary's averages only 59 points a game for their opponents. We're seeing it right there. Marshall Lotus missing from long distance. And those 59 points, fourth best in the country. Caffaro kicking out to Benjamin. Driving baseline, kick to the corner. This is Ensminger. And this is the type of defense that St. Mary's will play and make things so difficult that Jalen Benjamin connects from straight on. Jalen Benjamin right there. In order to beat a good St. Mary's team, you need guys to step up and make shots. And Benjamin off the bench making his contribution felt. So only one player that started the game for Santa Clara is on the floor right now. And Randy Bennett has all five of his starters in. After a 9-0 start, Santa Clara's back-to-back -back threes. This one will go out to St. Mary's and we have a timeout on the floor so after a fast start from the Gales the Broncos have put back-to-back -back threes on the board off to a 9-0 run to begin this game but Henry Santa Clara back with back-to-back -back threes and needing the bench to do it absolutely and we talked about the depth of these Broncos Herb Sendak this year he's gone 11 even 12 players deep in the game before and it's Showing good dividends. It certainly worked against Gonzaga on Thursday night. Dukas misfires. Another Santa Clara rebound. Tyree Bryant picking his way. Floater in the air. Back iron miss. And gobbled up by Dukas and the Gales. Santa Clara, I think we said at the outset, out-rebounded Gonzaga on Thursday, 44-31. to And it was a Gonzaga side. Mark Fusai did not shoot the ball well. Inside to Jefferson, getting in deep and laying it in. Nice high-low game for the Gales, but uh, Santa Clara tried to pick up the momentum uh, from that last game, but a little bit of a drop-off for the Broncos, who now trail by five. And Jefferson's a player that can do a little bit of everything. Knock down threes, score in the post, attack the rim. He's had a really good start here today. Jalen Jalen Benjamin driving and has his shot blocked, but a foul is called. Yes, foul. And so Santa Clara's Jalen Benjamin coming off the bench and has an opportunity for a couple of free throws here. We'll go ahead and take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by a tool shed rentals and Henry for Santa Clara. We talked about the emotion and excitement of Thursday night's victory. Santa Clara has weathered that initial run of St. Mary's just need to settle in and build off the momentum of the crowd and having a stout, strong, stingy St. Mary's defense to go up against. They really need to execute in the half court. Obviously, the Broncos want to get out in transition, but down the stretch, we need that for the Broncos. And then also this full court team effort really need all hands on deck for the Broncos. Jalen Benjamin comes up short, knocked off of Christoph Tilly. Alex Dukas goes to the bench. And Luke Barrett, the 6'6 redshirt junior from Piedmont, really an energy player, former walk-on, earned a scholarship as Marshallonis speeding into the front court. And an early lead for the Gales here on the road, where last year they beat the Broncos by 3, 67 to 64. Barrett backdoor cut, he's fouled. And count the bucket, he'll go to the line. And just a really nice backdoor cut there from Barrett and St. Mary's. We'll play that two-man split action and credit Mitchell Saxon for a good pass. And then taking a look for St. Mary's, we know their defensive prowess. And really what stands out is their rebounding. They, 
have a plus 12 rebounding margin over their opponents and when they're able to dictate the pace of play lots of ball screens for Aiden Mahaney they become really difficult largest lead early here as we're not quite to the midway point of the first half Santa Clara and St. Mary's and St. Mary's team that 3-0 in conference with wins at San Diego and LMU and then a 95-52 went over Portland Jalen Benjamin fall away from the right elbow missed rebounded by Marshallonis this is Jefferson who's off to a hot start three of four shooting for him Mahaney with the ball one of those players that can start slowly and then pile up points in a hurry misses off the back iron the ball is tipped and another offensive rebound for the Gales something Santa Clara did very well against Gonzaga Marshallonis Santa Clara wanted a walk. Eight on the timer. Mahaney. Nice shot from Mahaney who kind of shakes his right hand as if to say, let's get this thing loosened up. Largest lead is 11. Jeff firing a triple. Jefferson clears. And that's the frustrating thing when you're playing St. Mary's is you want to go fast and push in transition, but if not, you're back on defense and then have to guard for another 30 seconds. They're more than happy using all that shot clock to get a perfect shot. Wide open Barrett in the corner. Got another one. And just surgical in the pick and roll and sharing the ball, creating opportunities. And so far, St. Mary's has been knocking him down. 11 straight points for the Gales. Randy Bennett shouting instructions to his team on the defensive end. And this unit for Santa Clara right now having all kinds of trouble. Johnny O'Neill driving. Bounces a pass intended for Tilly. Taken by Marshall Onis. It's a three-on-one. Mahaney to the basket. Defense to offense. Leading good things for St. Mary's as they've opened up a big lead here. And Herb Sendex forced to take another timeout. The Gay have been doing it on the defensive end. And have been knocking down shots. It's all going St. Mary's direction right now but the Broncos with the basketball substitution for the Gales as Harry Wessels the seven footer from Australia is into the game battling Kristoff Tilly the seven footer jump hook from Tilly short rebound Wessels and it just seems when the Broncos miss everything's been short here this afternoon a lot of excitement a lot of emotion for Santa Clara on Thursday Ending a 26-game losing streak to Gonzaga. Baseline drive. Top side. This is Marshall Otis attacking the rim. Wow. This is a crafty move with the left hand high off the glass there from Marshall Otis. 15-0 run for the Gales. This is Tilly. Coming up short. And St. Mary's again. Nothing easy so far here for Santa Clara on the offensive end. Every shot hasn't been at the rim. It's been forced out. Johnny O'Neill defending Mahaney. Hops into the paint. Reverse layup. Carlos Marshall Jr. now for Santa Clara. Had an off game against Gonzaga. Broncos were hoping to have him contribute here early. O'Neal bouncing down to Tilly now has Jefferson on him. Tilly pulling his way to the basket. We have contact on the floor. Joshua Jefferson will pick up this foul. And now Santa Clara. Herb Sedek will try and adjust the pieces, try and mix things up to find the right combination. Meanwhile, Randy Bennett will bring on the sophomore from Torrey Pines High School in San Diego, Chris Howell. Tyree Bryan and for Carlos Marshall Jr. Mahaney will come out. Dukas heads to the scorer's table. So a little bit of a chess match from two veteran head coaches with Jefferson going to the bench. Randy Bennett in his 23rd year has over 500 career wins. Herb Sedek in his eighth year at Santa Clara as Brenton Knapper leaves the three short. But obviously 545 wins. Uh, obvious long and successful career for Herb Sedek. And right now the Gales doing just about everything they want. That ball is right on the rim, and Wessels dunks it. 
Wow, offensive rebound slam there by from Wessels. And for Santa Clara, they need somebody to step up, play aggressive, and match this energy that the Gales have come out here today on the Levy Center. Plenty of basketball to play, but right now Santa Clara just not bringing it. A lot of shots are short. Marshallonis on the run. Wants to go right at Brenton Napper, and he can't get the lay-in, but the tip is in by Barrett. And that's when St. Mary's is more than comfortable pushing in transition. When they can get stops and have numbers, they'll gladly push. And right now, they're just out scrapping Santa Clara to these offensive rebounds and 50-50 balls. 17 straight points. Ball is loose. And the Gales have it again. Twelve of twenty-two shooting for St. Mary's. Two for fifteen for Santa Clara. Marshallonis will fire. Wessels offensive board. They'll find Barrett. Five on the timer. Wessel sets the screen. Marshallonis with a finish. Yeah, just a nice Euro step there from Marshallonis as the ball goes out of bounds. That'll take us to a media, but right now we're seeing why the coaches in the WCC pick St. Mary's to finish at the top. 21 nothing run for participation coming into this game, but St. Mary's has turned this one on its head. Currently, in quite the run for Randy Bennett. Who's trying to make it a fourth consecutive win over Santa Clara. And so far, his team has done everything they've needed to do. And they've built quite the advantage. And yeah, they certainly have. And Santa Clara is going to try to counter, slow down these gills, pulling out their 1-3-1 defense. We'll see if that can have an impact on this game. Barron in the corner. Dukas. Nice ball movement. They got the open look. We were talking a little bit earlier about Santa Clara trying to get inside as a nice follow away from Johnny O'Neill. The transfer from American University ends the 21 nothing run. But part of that is remaining aggressive and Santa Clara was not doing that. Well, they haven't really done it at all in the first half. And Johnny O'Neill, he's shown a little bit of more aggression as we started conference play, he's been getting in the lane, and it's been helping out his scoring. Howell open for three. Ball is tipped and will go out of bounds. Last touch by Jake Ensminger. Aiden Mahaney, who had checked out of the game, the team's leading scorer coming into play, and who has five points, is back in the game, and Howell will sit down. Mitchell Saxon back in. Marshallonis misses a floater. Here's a player Santa Clara really has been relying on to turn things around in games that are stuck in the mud offensively, and that's Adama Alpha Ball, who wears the number four in white. This is Jacob Ensminger. Ensminger spinning to the basket. Throws it back out to Ball with seven to shoot. Santa Clara has to hurry here. Flipped inside, intended for Francisco Caffaro. And the turnover will give it back to the Gales. That's Santa Clara's sixth turnover. St. Mary's has yet to give it away. And that's really been the story of the game so far is Santa Clara's just having a hard time generating positive things on the offensive end. And St. Mary's, we talked about it. I'm just impressed with how they're guarding ball screens. They have not let Adama Alpha Ball get comfortable. He has no space. And Randy Bennett's team's doing a really good job of making it uncomfortable for these Bronco guards. Dukas pump fake from three. Nearly throws it away. Baseline drive. And Adama Alpha Ball lost his balance and ends up fouling Barrett on the baseline. You've played in this rivalry. These two schools, not just in basketball, but every sport. Specifically against a Randy Bennett team, as you get a look at the foul there. What kinds of problems does a Randy Bennett team pose for an opponent? His teams are always very disciplined, and they're always a unit. And that's really the hard part as Saxon battles down low is it's hard to get them out of their rhythm 
And to your point earlier, when they get a lead, they're more than happy to milk the clock and really execute methodically to get the best shot possible. Pump fake from Saxon. He gets fouled. Nearly rolls it home. Tilly will pick up his first. Christoph Tilly last season really came on toward the end of the year for Santa Clara, helping the Broncos earn an NIT bid for the second consecutive year. Meanwhile, Saxon, the Seattle native, 6'10 senior, coming in at 11 points and 8 rebounds. Last year, virtually the same numbers in 35 starts for Randy Bennett. All freshman selection. Started his career for the first two years as a backup to Matthias Toss in that front court. But he connects on both, and the advantage is 24. And that's really the pipeline that St. Mary's has created, finding good bigs, and they've learned from each other. Toss learned from Jock Landale, and now you're seeing Mitchell Saxon carry on that really strong tradition of Gale Big Men. Yeah, two key players gone from last year's squad that went 27 and 8, 14 and 2 in conference and beat the number two seed Gonzaga in the West Coast Conference Tournament Final. Took care of VCU in the round of 64 in the NC2A tournament and then lost to UConn in the round of 32. We have an offensive foul now on Christoph Tilly. But they lost the defensive player of the year, Logan Johnson. Led the team in scoring as well. He was an energy guy, someone that led that team. And talking to a couple people closer to the St. Mary's program, it took a while early in the season for the Gales to find that leader, that ability to be comfortable. And they lost a couple of close games. Dukas in the corner. Pile up underneath. Santa Clara has it off the miss. And really for both these teams... They went into that holiday break with tough losses, losing to Missouri State for St. Mary's, and then for Santa Clara, having that loss to Yale. But starting off conference, both these teams have been firing on all cylinders. Gale started three and five with losses to San Diego State, Xavier, Utah, and Boise State. Mahaney, double clutch. <laughs> He could get to that mid-range and knock down those shots. He could also drill them from deep. And when Mahaney has time and space and he's able to operate in the key, he's really a difficult guard. Chef baseline drive, finds O'Neal. Leaning in, finding Caffaro, goes up. Can't get the shot to go, but he's fouled and he's going to go to the line and just... Even just navigating the St. Mary's defense and passing around to get the shots seems to be so it takes so much effort for Santa Clara right now. And it's just been a struggle so far here early today for Santa Clara on the offensive end and defensive end. Caffaro. Four seasons at Virginia, played close to 100 games, was a member of the 2019 title team. Played 16 minutes on Thursday night. Very good passer. He had three assists against the Bulldogs. One for two from the line for the guy they call Poppy. Broncos going back to that 1-3-1. They've gotten a few stops out of it. Mahaney and Marshall Lonis really maturing into a fantastic backcourt for the Gales. Seven to shoot. Jefferson steps in. Wide open look. He's been impressive. I mean, I've certainly been impressed how he's progressed from his freshman to sophomore year. He's definitely taken that next step. Well, so far, Santa Clara is still struggling to figure out St. Mary's, who are out to a 36-9 lead. The Gales, led by Joshua Jefferson's nine points, have had six players reach the scoreboard. Meanwhile, the Broncos shooting just three of 17. St. Mary's defense, their offense, everything clicking. 
it really has been the story so far and for Santa Clara they need to establish some sort of rhythm offensively and that starts with getting some stops and really just turning up the aggressiveness and turning up the pressure trying to get these St. Mary's guards out of their rhythm the true freshman from England Luke McKeldon has stepped in as Adama alpha ball driving as it blocked back into his hands and now has it in the corner there's a corner triple in the air McKeldon nudged off the ball and it's picked up by Jefferson so Herb Sendick trying the usual suspects trying some players that don't get a lot of minutes as McKeldon the 6'10 240 pounder is playing in just his sixth game for the Broncos. Barrett is in for Randy Bennett. <laughs> Mahaney. I think Marcelonis right there threw it between the legs of Johnny O'Neill for a highlight play and a Mahaney triple. Mahaney knocking down the third three-pointer for the Gales. He had two nice games against Santa Clara last year. A 20-pointer and an 18-pointer. Tyree Bryan back in. McKeldon finding Johnny O'Neill getting to the basket. And the Broncos have the layup. A nice two-man there between Luke McKeldon and Johnny O'Neill. O'Neill using the St. Mary's pressure cutting back door. Broncos are going to need more of that. Barrett finding Mahaney inside of two and a half to play Mahaney open again and another one for Aiden Mahaney it's just target practice right here for Aiden Mahaney and if the Broncos are going to continue playing this 1-3-1 zone they need to locate shooters Carlos Marshall Jr. to the free throw line McKeldon on the low block has it poked away from behind. Marcelona speeding the length of the court. And he'll go to the line. The transition is delivering the goods for St. Mary's here in the first half. And Augustus Marcelona very much like his father, former NBA star here in the Bay Area. Sharunas with the Golden State Warriors. And right, right now Santa Clara shell-shocked. And Marcelonis has filled in nicely as Logan Johnson, after his graduation, he's really stepped up and been a bit of a steady force for the Gales. He, he's able to play the point guard position to give Mahaney a bit of relief, have him play off the ball. And he's had some big games this year, scoring the basketball and also setting up his teammates. Caffaro in for Santa Clara. O'Neal will go to the bench. St. Mary's has made their last four shots. And Marshall Onis could split a pair here at the line. Really spreading out the scoring. Mahaney leading the way with 13. Jefferson with nine. Six for Saxon, five for Marshall Onis. Brenton Knapper is in for Santa Clara. Really contesting every pass here. Jump hook, Tilly. And Tilly's been really effective this year when he's able to get to his right-hand hook. That's his staple move, and right there, caught it deep on the low post and finished over Mitchell Saxon. Tilly missed three games for Santa Clara after getting hit in the face and a two-point loss here at the Levy Center in the non-conference schedule against a very good Utah State team, but missed three games and only just recently returned in conference play. Barrett driving to the basket and laying it in. Using that energy to blow right past his defender. He has nine. Caffaro driving to the basket. He'll score one. Nice two-man action there between Napper and Caffaro. I think just for the Broncos, getting downhill, getting a piece of that paint, just opens things up against the St. Mary's Gales defense. The Gales just aren't missing right now. They've made five in a row. Can Mahaney make it six? Not quite, but the follow is in for Barrett. Just the energy, the effort, the hustle. Gales right now are just out scrapping the Broncos on their home court. Just a half second 
separating the half clock and the shot clock. Napper's left wide open. He'll try it. Twice on the iron. Tilly had the rebound, but he was bumped into by Saxon. He picks up his second. No oh, correction. Mason Forbes, the redshirt senior who just checked in. He's an interesting story at 6'9", 30. Last year, redshirted, did not play after four seasons at Harvard. And you know a little something about Harvard and the Ivy League, having played four years at Princeton. Certainly. I remember watching him at Harvard, and he's really come into his own. He can play the five, play the four. He's a nice piece. Tilly driving, scoring, and he'll go to the line. And that's the type of aggression that these Santa Clara Bronco need. Tilly getting downhill, attacking at the rim, going right at the teeth of the St. Mary's Gills defense. Christoph Tilly. You see him just basically deciding he was going to take it right to the rack and earning himself the two points and an opportunity to convert the three-point play. Tilly comes off with five. Cameron Tongue, a 6'7 junior forward for Massachusetts, who early this year had a career high 16 against New Mexico. But right now, final six seconds of the half. Let's see what St. Mary's can do here. Marshall Otis coming up just short, but that was really probably Pepperdine for the year. As we take a look at St. Mary's, next up a big game against USF in what will likely be a matchup of unbeatens as USF also has yet to lose. Coming into play, West Coast Conference standings brought to you by Lenardi's Market. You see the undefeated Broncos and Gales. That likely to change in the next 20 minutes after those 20 minutes, but USF as we said, I think kind of a sleeper right now in the West Coast Conference. So many teams talking about Gonzaga, how they've started, how they're playing right now. These two teams at St. Mary's and Santa Clara that beat Gonzaga. And right now, Chris Gerlifson's USF Tons are, are saying, you guys take all the attention. We'll just keep winning. Certainly. And it's going to be a fun tournament down at the Orleans in Vegas come March. It's going to be wide open and definitely looking forward to that one. Broncos with the first possession of the second half with Adama Alpha Ball now matched up with Saxon. Lob inside, Kristoff Tilly going up, but he's fouled. And so the Broncos opening possession will result in a couple of free throws. And the first foul of the second half on Augustus Marshallonis. And that was one positive for the Broncos heading into halftime. Kristoff Tilly had that nice and one. And right out of the gates, you can see Santa Clara's first play emphasis. Go inside, attack St. Mary's, get to the foul line until he has a chance to chip into this Gales lead. Would that be the primary adjustment for the Broncos early in the second half, knowing that there's no such thing as a 25-point shot? You just have to keep chipping, of course. I mean, it's never easy when your back's up against the wall, and it's one possession at a time on the offense and defensive end, and you just want to stay and chip your way back into this game for as long as possible. Christoph Tilly, the seven-footer from Berlin, Connects on both free throws. And now some full court pressure here by the Broncos with Napper and Ball on the tip of that spear. Jefferson had a good first half. He had nine. And Mahaney, who started slowly, ended up being the leading scorer for the Gales. Ten to shoot. Jefferson missing short. Good job there by Johnny O'Neill staying strong and staying vertical. A lob goes awry for Santa Clara as the ball was blocked off the head of Christoph Tilly. And Herb Sendek, very animated on the sideline, wanted a foul right there. Tilly kind of blinking and grimacing a little bit, like maybe there was contact. And Herb Sendek right to the edge of the coach's box. Likewise for Randy Bennett. These two near doppelgangers. <laughs> Pass by Mahaney, intercepted by O'Neill. Napper. Down low, off the window. 
caught the bucket. And that's the pace, that's the energy, and the type of aggression that Herb Sendex team wants to play. A nice response out of the halftime break here for the Broncos. Santa Clara got so much from their guard position against Gonzaga. A nice dish from Brenton Knapper, and maybe they're going to need to rely on this man and the front court. The defensive play that set this basket up was well done by Johnny O'Neill. Couldn't convert the three-point play. Dukas. You can't give him a lot of space. As Marshall Otis. Dukas a touch. Now Jefferson spinning. Five on the timer. Saxon going baseline. Shoving off with his right arm. Clearing space and getting the basket. And that's the frustrating thing about playing St. Mary's. You play great defense for 28 seconds. But credit St. Mary's. The composure and execution right there from Mitchell Saxon. Adama Alpha Ball to Tilly. Tilly to back to ball. Jumper from the left elbow. Back iron miss. Shot the rebound. Carlos Marshall Jr. spinning in traffic and losing the handle. Saxon and Tilly is the matchup right now to keep an eye on. Marshall Lotus accelerating downhill for the easy lay in. It's the pace of play. The change of speeds and directions there for Marshall Onis. Madonna Alpha Ball has been held scoreless in this game. Leaning in. Napper cutting to the rim. The dish and the score. And we're seeing here early off of the score. It allows Santa Clara to set up their full court pressure, slow down these gales, and for them hopefully generate some turnovers going the other way. Mahaney, wide open Jefferson, what a dish. Spins out, Dukas the rebound. So Santa Clara got what they wanted, which was a missed shot, but could not secure the rebound. Ten on the timer. Mahaney, free throw line. Dukas with four, now three. Dukas driving to the basket. St. Mary's able to get back so quickly. Tilly for the reverse. Saved over the end line by Dukas. Wow, just impressed with how St. Mary converges on the basketball. Missing the layup. Marshall Otis. O'Neill a transition three. Too strong. St. Mary's more than comfortable slowing it down. Running 30 seconds of the shot clock. And Randy Bennett wants to talk about it. Not seeing. And you can see by the score, they are well on their way as Herb Sendek has brought on a couple of new players off the bench in Jalen Benjamin and Jacob Ensminger. Meanwhile, Marshall Lotus with the basketball for St. Mary's. Marshall Onis driving, kicking to the corner. Santa Clara, strong defense, and they just simply ran out of time. And that can happen sometimes out of a timeout if it's not communicated how much time is left on the shot clock. And really the first mental mistake we've seen St. Mary's make all day. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a timeout. Basketball. 15 and a half to play second half for the Levy Center. Anthony Passarelli and Henry Caruso. Thanks for spending part of your Saturday with us. As St. Mary's has owned this one from the very beginning. Driving to the basket, missing the shot. Adama Alpha Ball, but he gets his own miss. Gonna put it back up and in. And just the speed and pace of Santa Clara's half-court offense. Is so much improved since the first half right there. Adam Alpha Ball getting his first bucket of the day. Yeah, his first points of the game for Santa Clara's leading scorer, 16 points per contest. And in West Coast Conference play, averaging 21 through the first three games. Jalen Benjamin 
a foul. First team foul. Some changes for St. Mary's with Barrett in there with Saxon now. Mahaney. Very calming presence for this St. Mary's offense. Mahaney penetrating. Now Jefferson may have traveled. Good job there by Jake Ensminger. Not giving and allowing Jefferson to back him down. We talked at the outset how St. Mary's came in giving up 59 points per contest, and that's fourth best in the country. Obviously, tops of the West Coast Conference. And they have done a lockdown job on Santa Clara here as Ensminger drives, trying to give it off. Instead, it's out to Jalen Benjamin. Seven on the timer. Benjamin's got to get this shot off. Falling away. Just nothing easy against St. Mary's. They do a really good job of helping and recover. And if you're a coach or a young guy watching, they really do a good job of showing how team defense is supposed to be played. Jefferson misses the layup. Battled for and won by Wessels. And the seven footer from Australia was fouled. Adama Alpha Ball has picked up his second as you get another look. There might have been an opportunity for a tied ball briefly, but Wessels was in the act of shooting. And so he'll get two free throws here. Away from the play, Joshua Jefferson is hobbled, standing at the head of the St. Mary's bench, and now he'll come out for Alex Dukas. And here's a player who last year played only eight minutes per game, but he has stepped into a key role. Good passer. They're playing through him a little bit in the offense. Nine points in the first half, and he goes to the bench. But you know, he came on strong in that conference tournament down in Vegas last season and has definitely rode the momentum of that into his sophomore year. Ball, a lob inside to Caffaro. Caffaro lays it in easily. Nice two-man game. And just the way that St. Mary's is guarding Santa Clara, they're putting so much emphasis trying to stop Adama Alpha Ball. Those big guys like Tilly and Caffro, they're going to get open if they roll hard and aggressively to the rim. Marsha Lotus. Drawing the foul on Ensminger. And that's his first third team foul. Herb Sedek at the end of the bench. And what could be his complaint there? I think he's just frustrated with that foul call. Yeah, unfortunate for Jake. Off the inbound, executed perfectly. Barrett breaks free at the free throw line, heads to the rim, takes the pass and lays it in. And Barrett, nothing flashy about him, plays hard and just always seems to be at the right place at the right time. He's one of those guys that sets the tone by his energy. Caffaro follows the miss by Bryan with a tip in. Nice tip right there by Jake Ensminger. Ensminger gets the bucket, my mistake. Brenton Knapper heads to the scores table. Really using that Saxon screen very well. Marshallonis into the corner, two on the timer. Baseline drive, throws it out top, but he traveled first. And a rare turnover for the Gales. Nice job there by Jalen Benjamin. Defending without fouling. And Santa Clara is in need more of that as they really try to chip back into this lead. Santa Clara doing much better here in the second half. From the floor, 5 of 11 and holding St. Mary's to 3 of 8. The rebounding edge heavily in favor of the Gales at plus 9. Caffaro setting the screen for Napper. Down the lane, lob inside, intended for Caffaro, but Saxon sniffing that out and forcing the turnover. Wide open, Barrett in the corner. No hurry for the Gales. With closing it on 12 minutes left to go here in the second half. There's a pull-up 17-footer. Yeah, that was pure right there from Mahaney. 
Aiden Mahaney. High school basketball not far from the St. Mary's campus at Camp Alindo. Tyree Bryan misses on the iron. Rebounded by Caffaro. Flip to Bryan. He'll fall away from the baseline. Twice on the rim. Rebounded by O'Neal. Is put back though, but he's fouled. And that's the type of energy all started right there by Francisco Caffaro, who leads this team in offensive rebounding. And credit Johnny O'Neal for getting another crack. And he'll go to be going to the free throw line when we come back. Mitchell Saxon picks up the foul. The Broncos shooting free throws when we return. So, uh, rather, St. Mary's all-time wins leader and his contract recently extended through the 26-27 season as Johnny O'Neill to the line. But what a program St. Mary's has built. Regular participants in the NCAA tournament. And incidentally, while other schools were Replacing players that left to either go play pro somewhere or left to go to another school. And a lot of schools dipping into the transfer portal. St. Mary's really doesn't do that or did not do that this past season. No, they certainly did not do it this last year. And, and really, they haven't done it at all. I mean, occasionally you'll have one guy that comes over as Barrett knocks down a three. Logan Johnson, of course, being an example. Uh, but really, it's... A program that's built on four years, buying into a good culture, and really a winning consistency that's been established over in Moraga. Logan Johnson, leading scorer from a year ago, now playing in the G League. It's Johnny O'Neill loses the handle on it, and it'll be St. Mary's basketball. Just the activity of the Gales. They've gotten their hands on so many drives, passes. They had five blocks in the first half. It's just really made it difficult for Santa Clara to establish any type of offensive groove. With that corner three, Luke Barrett, who averages 16 minutes per game coming in, leads all scorers with 17 points on seven of eight shooting and two of three from behind the arc. Another opportunity. Long rebound. Broncos are unable to pick it up. Barrett baseline, bounce pass. To Wessels, Santa Clara recovering and stealing as Johnny O'Neill steps in front. Ensminger to Tyree Bryan. Closing in on the midway point of the second half. O'Neill, elbow. Bryan, one handed push, gets it to go. Nice move there by Tyree Bryan. He has that touch. And the ability to elevate from 12 to 15 feet. Tyree nearly had a double-double in the win Thursday over Gonzaga. 10 points, 8 rebounds. That's his first bucket of the game. Marshallonis leaping in, firing a pass into the hands of Wessels. 7 to shoot. Marshallonis nearly falls down. Bounces into the paint. Jump hook on the iron. Cleared by Caffaro. This one will go off the foot of Dukas and out. And it will be Santa Clara basketball. Adama Alpha Ball. Tilly and Marshall coming in for Napper, Ensminger, and Caffaro. Chris Howell, the sophomore from San Diego, back on the floor now for Randy Bennett. Broncos will be in Stockton on Thursday. And then back home on Saturday, a week from today. Pushes up a shot, does ball with the right hand. Comes up short to take on the Portland Pilots next Saturday at 4. Gale's not in any hurry here as we approach nine minutes left to go. Howell. Over Chef. Gets it to go. His first two points of the game. We talked about Santa Clara having that full team effort on Thursday against Gonzaga. But today, it's been all St. Mary's team effort. as a nice drive there by Johnny O'Neill. When your three-point shots aren't falling like they haven't today for Santa Clara, they've only made two. You have to drive. You have to attack. And well done there from Johnny. What we're seeing from Augustus Marshallonis, who last year didn't start was not a regular starter for Randy Bennett. 
is kind of his maturity into a true point guard for the Gales with the ability to score as well. And Mahaney misses, tipped to the sideline. It'll go out last touch by Santa Clara. But Marshallonis, this is a program that develops players. They may have an opportunity to plug in a new player at a spot through the transfer portal at some point, but predominantly with players like Marshallonis and players like Barrett, who, as we said, was a walk-on, now a scholarship player. Randy Bennett likes to have them mature in the system, and that has worked very well for them. And I think to your point as well, their assistant coaches, Joe Rahan, Mickey McConnell, great WCC players, great WCC guards, they come back, take spots on Randy Bennett's staff, and as a result, guys like Aiden Mahaney, Marshall Onis, even coming up through the ranks, Howell, they're learning from guys that have been at this level for a long time and have performed really well. Christian Hammond, the true freshman from Colorado, on the floor for the Broncos. He missed a couple of games with an injury. Carlos Marshall Jr. working that dribble on the left side, penetrating, driving to the basket, puts the shot up, draws contact, and it'll be a foul on St. Mary's, and Chef will go to the line. I think the only debate here is deciding who the foul's on, because if it does go against Saxon, that would be his fifth. Yeah, the officials are going to come over and take a look at the courtside monitor. And we will have a timeout. We come out with Marshall Jr. at the line. The foul was on Chris Howell. Originally, there was some speculation if it would be Gales center Mitchell Saxon's fifth, but it was indeed not. And Carlos Marshall Jr. misses. He had a tough night against Gonzaga. And really hasn't been on the floor all that much in this one. He splits the pair. There's that pressure we were talking about. Santa Clara trying to force some turnovers and just find a thread to get back into this game. Down 26 with seven and a half to play. But so far, St. Mary's has it on lock here at the Levy Center. Leading that clock down late. And the ball is tipped out of bounds off of Adama off a ball with three to shoot for the Gales. Another example of Santa Clara playing good defense for 23 sec or 27 seconds rather. Now just need to walk in for these three seconds and get a stop. And this is what the Gales do so well. They can figure out a way to get something at the very tail end of it as Mahaney fires and drills it. Right on cue, Aiden Mahaney knocking it down. 18 for Mahaney. And contact on the drive. It'll be Marshall Otis. 15 foul on the Gales. If you're St. Mary's, you executed with 7.09 to play and a comfortable lead, at least up until this point, you've executed this Thursday, Saturday, exactly as you would have wanted to. Blowout went over Portland. Comfortable lead right now against Santa Clara. There's the drive to the basket. And the dish from the freshman Hammond resulting in a stuff from Tilly. Send it in Christoph Tilly. And how about Christian Hammond coming into this game and making his presence felt. Tilly, the first Bronco into double figures with 11. Barrett, a quick touch. He's had a good game. Mahaney. Working against Hammond. There's the step back. Missing it short. Three Broncos. And not one of them could corral it. And it's just been that type of day for Santa Clara. Jump hook. Nice look from Harry Wessels. And that's up to the now 20 second chance points for the Gales in this contest. Jeff working against Howell. So difficult for Santa Clara to get any space. Tilly had it briefly. Fumbles it. Picks it back up. Loses it. 
Santa Clara's 13th turnover. And right now, this is full St. Mary's Gale mode right now with Mahaney out near midcourt, keeping one eye on the defender and another eye on the shot clock. Bulling his way toward the paint. Barrett. On the rim, no. We've got contact underneath. Looks like this one might be going against Santa Clara's Christoph Tilly. Tilly's third. Yeah, you can see there just Tilly trying to box out, but pulls Wessels to the ground. Tilly, O'Neill, and Marshall headed to the bench. Caffaro, Cameron Tongue, and Tyree Bryan have checked in. Also in the game, still Hammond and Adama Alpha Ball. A couple of seven footers working against each other. Cameron Tongue rebounds the miss. Adama Alpha Ball has been shut down in this one. Working to the elbow. Nice screen set. Leaning in. Shot blocked. But contact. As Marshall Onis was basically run right into a seven foot screen. The Gales commit the foul. And it will be on Wessels. His first. Yeah, for Adama Alpha Ball, just it's been tough for him as we get another look at that. Even when he has an inch of space and you think there's daylight, he's still getting contested and knocked to the ground. But he's a tough kid. We've seen him respond so many times. And even when it feels like he's having an off night, he has the ability to turn it on in a hurry. Ball's been held to three points in this one with that free throw. Coming into this one, 86% from the line on the year. As Ensminger heads to the scorer's table. Just south of five minutes left to go in the second half. And ball will come out for Ensminger. If you're the rest of the West Coast Conference and you're looking at this score right now, there's a couple of games coming up in a few minutes. UOP at LMU. Pepperdine at San Diego and then 7 o'clock Portland at USF. But if you're looking at this score right now, are you thinking, oh boy, St. Mary's might be more than anybody can handle. I mean, certainly surprising given the fact the way that Santa Clara played on Thursday night really took it to Gonzaga in a tough, hard-fought game. But to your point, St. Mary's, it really showed today why they're right now the class of this conference. Howell misses, but once again, the Broncos can't secure the rebound. They pump the shot clock up to 20. Marshallona dribbling into traffic. Try to nifty bounce pass. Taken by Santa Clara. This is Tongue. Defended down low by Forbes. Cameron Tongue leaning in. Jump hook. Got it. And he's fouled. And that's what Cameron Tongue can do. He brings that element of toughness and aggression and a nice move for the junior. Marshall Onis comes out. We may not see him the rest of the way as he goes to the bench. Seven points, ten assists. As Cameron Tongue will get an opportunity to convert a three-point play. The freshman, Jordan Ross, is on the floor. A good pass first point guard and Harry Wessels is being sent to the bench. May have a cut, but he's been told to go take care of it. And Mitchell Saxon, who has been on the bench with four fouls. And at this point, the game, a 25-point advantage for St. Mary's. Make it 24 on the main free throw by Cameron Tongue. Really no need to get Mitchell Saxon back in the game, but four minutes to play. Jordan Ross with the basketball now handing off to Mahaney. Ross was instrumental in that do double overtime win earlier this year in the non-conference schedule by the Gales against UNLV in Phoenix. And his floater is good with six on the timer. And, and that's something that's not easy to do is 
sit on the bench for 37 minutes, come into the game, and immediately on the first touch, get downhill and make a nice floater. Ensminger left wide open at the top of the key. As we approach three minutes left, Mahaney with 18 points has played 34 minutes. Gales out shooting the Broncos 48% to 40%. Mahaney to the free throw line. Leaves off as McKeldon, the freshman, battling against Saxon, who lays it in. Saxon in the double figures with 10. Hammond trying to battle through, take the handoff. Instead, it's Tyree Bryan feeding the post. Once again, it's Tongue against Forbes. Jump hook, up no good, and run down to the corner by Mahaney. Randy Bennett's going to get a timeout, and his son will come in. Cade Bennett, who was a teammate of Aiden Mahaney, Mahaney Saturday afternoon turned evening and a matchup of a pair of 3-0 WCC teams has turned into a St. Mary's romp. Ross out on the floor now with Forbes, Wessels, Cade Bennett, Randy Bennett, the head coach's son. For these final two minutes, in the first of two meetings between these two schools this year. Ross penetrating, driving right to the basket, missing the shot. Good defense by Cameron Tongue. And last touch by Ensminger. It will be St. Mary's basketball. These two teams will meet again on January 31st, 8 o'clock. Nice That's crossover the dribble by Benjamin. And Jalen up underneath, trying to turn the corner on Bennett. And Bennett commits the foul. Nice move there by Jalen Benjamin, and it's a little bit different this year is that we're going to have a Wednesday night game that 31st. Of course. How, how do you know it's a Wednesday? <laughs> because I was looking at the travel schedule. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, of course, WCC always plays Thursday. Thursday, Saturday. Thursday, Saturday. Things have changed with BYU leaving the conference. And next year, there will be a couple new teams in the conference coming from what used to be the Pac-12 and Washington State and Oregon State. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I think just really elevates the conference and shows that the multiple teams can continue getting into the tournament. And it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to those Cougars and Beavers joining. It'll be a two-year commitment to having those two schools join the conference. 90 seconds to play. Wessels battling. Jump hook. Nicely done over Luke McKeldon. And Wessels has eight. Final 80 seconds to play here inside the Levy Center. And St. Mary's will improve as a drive to the basket. Shot blocked by the seven-footer. Cameron Tongue turned away but picked up by Benjamin. Crossover dribble. Nicely done as he changed directions. And a pass back out to Benjamin is knocked into the crowd. I think with both these teams, even as the substitutions come in, they still execute and play the same way as if the starters would. And oftentimes you see in college basketball towards the end of the game, someone come in, try to make it about themselves, but both these teams really do a good job of trying to execute their coaches values and fundamentals nice dish from McKeldon to Christian Hammond for the lay-in Kevin Gadd the redshirt freshman had just checked in he had his first five collegiate points in the blowout win on Thursday over Portland final 45 seconds to play some St. Mary's fans in the building Wanting to put an exclamation point on this Gale victory. Gad will fire three. Missing. Tipped and grabbed by Ensminger. Final 20 seconds to play.
Benjamin trying to turn the corner. Will fire the step back from the corner. Missing. Wessels the rebound, and that will do it. Final seconds here inside the Levy Center will be counted off as the St. Mary's Gales get a West Coast Conference win on the road.